So we've been on a journey together. I gotta say that so it completes the whole sermon series. Um, been on this journey together talking about what it means to be responsible, uh, responsible participants in taking care and being a part of God's creation. Uh, we're reminded throughout scripture that we were created in the image of God, in the image of God, male and female, we were created. So therefore we are intimately a part of God's creation. It's not something that we're separate from. We find ourselves right in the midst of it. When Barry says that he doesn't understand what environment means, he believes that we're a part of environ, which means that we are intimately linked with everything else that goes on. Matter of fact, from the very begin of the, God, of, the, of the scriptures, we find that God creates us, and not just in the image of male and female, but God creates us out of dust, out of dirt, out of dirt. Uh, that's how closely connected the relationship is between humanity and everything else you see around us. It's a part of us, and we're a part of it. And God looked at it all and said it is Good. very good. Very, very good. And therefore, we have some kind of responsibility. It is a part of our Christian witness to be responsible in that way. And to not allow whatever political party, whatever the pundits are saying about environmentalism, to use it for their own propaganda, their own gain, or their, the corporations that like to use the language to support it. But to break through all that and just get down to the truth and the basics. That if God loves all of God's creation, then we're called to love creation as well. And if we love God's creation the same way God loves it, then we want to take some responsibility in making sure that it is cared for and maintained. If anything, you and I have been formed in the image of God, and therefore we have a greater responsibility towards that which we love. How many of you like going to the beach? How many of you love a good sunset? How many of you love a breeze in the forest? How many of you like to go deer hunting? No. <laughs> I knew there'd be two people that right there. How many of you like to garden? How many of you like to get dirty a little bit? How many of you like God's creatures? How many of you like waking up in the morning and looking out your back window and seeing some animal walking across your back lawn? All of that is a celebration of all that God has done for us and how we participate in the midst of that. And we step back and we look at it and we go, man, how awesome and wonderful you are, God, and how wonderful it is to be a part of your very, very good creation which is to be redeemed and reconciled and made new. It's not to disappear. It's a part of God's good work, and so are we. Amen? And so we should make every effort and pour as much energy as possible into doing the things that are right for the world. Right for people, right for the soil, right for the plants, right for the water. Just right. It's a part of our witness. It, it's what it means to be caught up in God's salvation. I know for some of you, you've been led to believe that salvation is about your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And while that's a part of it, it's not the whole of what it means to say that we are participants in God's acts of salvation. God is doing a good work in the midst of the world. We've all been invited to be a part of that. And when we step into God's salvation through Jesus Christ, what that means is it opens our eyes, it opens our hearts, our ears, to be fully aware of what it means to be a participant in God's love. In other words, it's not just about the vertical relationship. All of a sudden, it becomes a part of the horizontal relationship. We come to know Jesus Christ and God's love for us. He liberates us from our darkness, our burdens, our sin. And he says, you are forgiven. He gives us the keys to liberation so that we can step to the next level and actually be participants in God's world to actually share the good news of God's love with everyone we meet and actually participate as an action of God's love towards caring for the good things that God created because there's an intimate balance in the midst of all of this. God created it so that it might work together and that we find ourselves participating in the midst of that. And that's why it's important to preach about this. That's why it's important to talk about this. Last week I said, I was going to say something like, you're not going to hear this sermon downtown. You're not. You're probably not going to hear this message in a lot of churches because they think it's too political. I got news for you. We are participants in the politics of Jesus. And Jesus is more interested, he, he has a greater interest than just your own personal salvation. 
Jesus is interested in the redemption of the whole of creation. Amen. And so I got to thinking that's all theological, heady stuff. But I think one of the struggles that we have within the church is that we've been kind of misled a little bit into thinking that this message that Jesus comes to bring is all about us. I got news for you. It's not just all about you. It's an invitation to a story bigger than yourself. You're being invited into something that God is doing, acting on our behalf. And we can either participate in that, or we can sit and wait by the wayside. And part of the struggle that we have within the life of the church is that we've been led to believe that the most important thing is simply getting to heaven. In other words, that the primary focus of the church is to convince you of your burdens, your sins, and your brokenness, and get you right so that when you die or you leave this planet, you can take the holy escalator to a place called heaven. And so it creates this dualistic universe. And if you remember a couple weeks ago when we talked about one of the problems with talking about creation and, and environmentalism and creation care is that the church for so long has looked at the earth as being something that is depraved or evil or dark or wild or something that needs to be controlled. And I got news for you, it's not, it was not created that way. It was not created to be cast aside, and yet the church sometimes has viewed the world as something that's going to disappear, and then we enter into salvation in Jesus Christ. We go up there to heaven somewhere, and that isn't even good theological or biblical theology. That's just really, really bad theology. What it actually is is a participation in Greek philosophy. It's actually participating in a platonic understanding of the universe, which isn't rooted in the scriptures. This dualistic idea that the earth is bad and it's going to go away and then we're all going to go to heaven somewhere or we're going to be taken to heaven somewhere. Throughout scripture, time and time again, we are reminded that earth and heaven are intimately linked over and over and over again. Matter of fact, we heard it from the prophet Isaiah, didn't we? He talks about the new creation and guess what's being formed in that new creation? A new heaven and a new even when you get to the end of the New Testament, right, and you read the book of Revelation, every image that is portrayed there is not a separation. It's not the earth disappears and all of a sudden we're shot up into some heavenly realm somewhere, into the perfect realm opposed to the depraved realm. What we see is heaven ascending down on the earth. earth. God loves God's earth. God has no intention of getting rid of the earth. It's a part of the redemption of all creation. And just as our lives are going to be formed in the new creation through Jesus Christ, so is the earth. Praise God. Everything beautiful and wonderful you experience in this world continues on into God's future. But the focus shouldn't be so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good. Amen. In other words, we should be concerned about the now even more than the future. Because guess what? The future is coming. We don't have to worry about it. <laughs> What we need to focus on now is how we live our lives here, in this place, in this time. How we bear witness to Jesus Christ, the love of God, in this moment. That's our work. We're not called to sit around and wait. I know Jesus, I'm good, I got my ticket to heaven. I got news for you. There's scripture that references against that, right? Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he or she who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. What is God's will? To love, right? To love God's people, God's creation. What it is, it's all about relationship. Well, that's a moment of epiphany, isn't it? <laughs> the center, the core of my theology, the core, I think, a cornerstone is what? The meaning of life is? Relationship. It's all about relationships. And we see that even in our responsible action towards God's good creation. We're being invited into that relationship as well. So I got to thinking of something that might be able to break it down, give you a little something to hold on to. I remember when I was in high school and I came to my senior year. Now, anybody remember that moment? You know, heading to your senior year? If you didn't graduate from high school, that's fine. There, at some point you graduated from something, right? But I remember specifically in my life heading into my senior year. And there's this interesting thing that happens during that time. It's called senioritis. Did any of you suffer from senioritis? And what happens in senioritis is you're aware that you're about to head on to something new. 
And so everything that you've been formed in, your family, your friends, the school that you went to, well, that's kind of about to be old news, isn't it? And so you go to school kind of begrudgingly, and you're like, oh my gosh, how much more do I have to suffer with these teachers? <laughs> or you have all these friends that you kind of surround yourself who are younger than you, maybe a junior or a sophomore, and you're thinking, ah, oh, how much more do I have to hang out with these little piddly pipsqueaks, right? You know, I'm about to move on to something great. For my, in my life, I was about to head on to college. Now, college was that wonderful future I was looking forward to. You know, I wasn't interested in all the things of the past. I had a new hope-filled future before me. And what I found myself doing was becoming rather cranky. Yeah, yeah it's hard to believe, I know. And the first few months of senioritis, I was a jerk. I mean, I know that is really, Molly's like, that's hard to believe. I know, that's really, but, but I was so focused on the future that you know, I'd get cranky with my parents. My mom was trying to help me out get ready for college. I'd get, I'd get, you know, real cliffed at her and everything. And my friends, they wanted to do things. I'm like, I'm not, I'm beyond that, you know. I'm ready to go on to college. I can't hang out with you anymore. And even the youth group that I was a part of got a little old. And I was a senior. Now, internally, I know that I was also struggling with this fact that I was losing something. And that I was scared of what the future held. But about a couple months into that senioritis, I realized that I could be cranky for the rest of the year and really screw up a lot of relationships and not enjoy my senior year because I was always looking for the future. Or I could celebrate the relationships in the present. And I did that. All of a sudden, I started getting even more involved with my youth. I hung out with my friends that I had been a part of their lives for many years. I learned to appreciate my parents and celebrate all that they did for me. I was pretty good at that, wasn't I? <laughs> it's because I found myself living in the now that it made a tremendous amount of difference in the relationships in my life. I wasn't setting everything aside, just looking for a future hope. I found hope and life in the present. And I think that sometimes the way the church is, the way that we view our relationship with Christ, we think that it's all about what's to come. And we get excited about God's future, that we sometimes set aside the important relationships of the present. I know when we talk about the meaning of life being relationships, immediately a lot of times we head towards people, and people are important. But I want to say that that relationship is also with God's creation. It's with the earth, the plants, and the animals, and the soil, and the water. And just as much as God desires for us to have a healthy relationship with God and with each other, God also wants us to have a healthy relationship with everything else in God's creation. As a matter of fact, that's really what God is inviting us into. If you think about what makes for a healthy relationship, the first thing that makes for a healthy relationship is mutual respect. And when, I, when I'm talking about a healthy relationship, you can, you can equate it to anything in your life. Your kids, your coworkers, your spouse, and yes, the earth. The first thing in a healthy relationship is mutual respect. It's viewing the other person as an equal. And it's celebrating them. Because after mutual respect, a healthy relationship moves to this idea that we want the best for the other. That's where mutual respect brings you. You want the best for the other person in your life. You want the the best for God's creation around you. You want, you want to participate in a relationship in a healthy way. Think always of the best for the other person over and above yourself. And that immediately leads to the third component of the healthy relationship. And that is that we take care of each other. That we take care of each other. 
Amen? I think that's what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And that's what we're doing. Taking this journey of discipleship is all about. It's about being formed in those practices and those ways where we can live that way with God, with each other, and with God's earth. We, as the followers of Jesus Christ, the ones born in his love and his life, should be representatives of heaven on earth. And everything we do and what we participate in should bring light and life to everything else around us. And that includes the very earth. the glory of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.